All right, Shalom, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai. All praises and glory is due to Yahweh, Baal Shem Yahweh Shai, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, especially in the times we're in. Now, um, this video is not going to be too long. This video will be a response to a question that was asked of me on this video here, our conflicting nature in this ministry, importance of being prudent in this ministry. Now, um, I'm going to go right to the comments. This was from Israel for Life. He says, um, he or she, I'm not sure if it's a he or she, or if this person's a he or she. Uh, beautiful lesson. All praise to the Heavenly Father. Glad you were edified. Yahweh through his son, Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Apostle Gabor, can you do a lesson on Exodus, 20, uh, Exodus 34 and 21? All right. So, like I said, it's not going to be a, a long lesson. Let's go to the book of uh, Exodus 34 and 21. It says, uh, six days thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest in airing time, and in harvest thou shalt rest. So, uh, we should discuss uh, what calibrates a day, or what calibrates the seventh day. Well, the new moon, okay? And the seventh day can fall any day during the week. It depends on the new moon, all right? The new moon starts off the first day, which is the first day of the month. The new moon is the first day of the month. And then you count seven days, that would be a Sabbath. Now, the moon is what calibrates time, okay? If you go in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus, the 43rd chapter, Let's start at the sixth verse. It says, He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Right, because you have uh, something called uh, blood moon. All right, you have something called the eclipse of the moon. All right, uh, those are usually for signs. Okay, signs of a kingdom and its downfall, okay? And it's no different with Esau's kingdom. All right, the eclipse of the moon, okay? Uh, the blood moons. Read on, it says, from the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. Now, let me show you this. A light that decreaseth in her perfection. All right, when the moon starts out, it starts out as a new moon. Clearly, you can see the new moon. Now, there are certain Israelites. Let me put this on. Uh, do not disturb. There are certain Israelites that teach that the new moon is the full moon. And as you clearly see by this illustration here, the new moon is not the full moon. <coughs> The new moon is when the whole body doesn't really have any light. It has a sliver of light, but the majority of the, the, the heavenly body that was, you know, the powers created, and this is pursuant to uh, uh, Genesis, the first chapter, the 14th verse. Let's read it. Genesis 1 and 14. It says, and God said, now, when you go into Hebrew, the word there for God is Allah Hayim, which means the powers. That would be Yahweh Shai and the angels. Now, the term Lord God does not appear until the second chapter, the fourth verse. Let's read it. It says, these are the generations of, of heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, 
the Lord God has, the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Most High Himself, Yahweh, which is the head of Yahweh Shai. Now, prior before that, all you saw was God, 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 going back to the first chapter. And this is where knowing the Hebrew comes in, because if you were to read that in the Hebrew, especially the word God, you would see Allahim, which means the powers. That was Yahweh Shai and the angels. Okay? And the term Lord God does not appear until Genesis, the second chapter, the fourth verse, which is the Most High himself. So Yahweh Shai and the angels, they created everything that we see at the behest of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, Genesis 1 and 14, let's read it, it says, <laughs> And the power said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. So you have for the day, you have the light known as the sun. And for the night, you have uh, the light known as the moon. Now, the scriptures tell us a day begins in the evening when the sun goes down. That's when the day starts. The next day starts. As a matter of fact, let's read the 13th verse, Genesis 1 and 13. And the evening and the morning were the third day. The evening, notice the evening is mentioned first. That's when the day begins. So the day begins, pretty much the day begins at night, the evening, right? And then um, the, the what you see at night is what the moon so the moon is what's used. Most people think the sun is what's what's used to calibrate time. No, the moon is what's used to calibrate time. The moon. Okay, because the evening and the morning were the third day. Or, or day, a day begins at evening first. And then you have the day part of the day when the sun comes up. Around 6 o'clock. Around 6 o'clock um, in the morning, the sun comes up. And by 6 o'clock in the evening, the sun sets. Now, pretty much everything is off course right now. So, you know, uh, that's why after 6, you, you'll still see the sun up because uh, everything is off, off course. But, you know, the scriptures speak about Esau turning things upside down. That's in Isaiah, somewhere in Isaiah. Also, uh, the book of Daniel, he shall change times and laws so oh another scripture um that comes to mind is uh psalms the book of psalms uh what is that 80 the 82nd chapter psalms the 82nd chapter it says the the whole earth is out of course let me see if i find it yeah psalm 82 and 5 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. So really by six, the sun is supposed to be setting. And then six, the, the next day, <coughs> six the next day, which is in the morning, the sun is supposed to come up. You're supposed to have 12 hours of, uh, mid, uh, 12 hours of night and 12 hours of the day. Okay. 24 hours a day, right? But like it says here, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. So going back to um, going back to uh, Genesis. So Genesis 1 and 14, and the power said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the powers made two great lights. The, great, the greater light to rule the day, that's the sun. And the lesser light to rule the night, that's the moon. He made the stars also. Now when does the day start? The day start at evening when the sun goes down. That's when the day starts. So the moon is, is really what's used to calibrate time. And what backs that up is uh, Ecclesiasticus 43 and 6. It says, He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. 
the month is called after her name. So the, the term month comes from the word moon. And even in the etymology dictionary, it, it says that. By the way, if you look up the word week, W-E-E-K, week, as in four weeks in the month, the word week means to change. All right, the word week means to change. So the moon changes during the weeks. The, the very word week means to change. Let me show you. Let's go to the etymology online, and we're going to look up the word week. And you're going to see from you're going to see for yourself. I think it's a German word. All right. This might be it. Okay, uh, Old English, wuku, I guess that's how you would say it, wuku, Middle Dutch, weke, Old High German, wecha, we um, probably originally with the sense of a turning. Now, what turns during the week? The phases of the moon. But let's keep reading. Okay, you know, we, we get the answer right there, a sense of turning, succession. Check it out. Meaning primarily change, alteration. What alters? The phases of the moon. But let's keep reading. The word may once have denoted some earlier time division. And that lines up right with scripture. He made the moon to declare feasts. Matter of fact, let's let's go back and read that again. Ecclesiasticus 43 and 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. So it's safe to say the moon is a calibration instrument. Time is calibrated by the moon. Right? Meaning primarily change, alteration. The word may once have denoted some earlier time division, such as the change of moon, half month. But there's no positive evidence of this. Now there is, all right? The positive evidence is the scriptures. In particular, scriptures like Ecclesiasticus 43 and 7. Okay, but this shows you that they know. All right, the word literally means to change, mean, meaning primarily change. And that came from the phases of the moon. Now let's go to the scripture. It says, from the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. The moon is called after the moon. The month is called after her name. So the word month came from moon. And, and what makes a month? The phases of the moon makes a month. Because as we go through the, the phases, I believe there's eight phases of the moon. As we go through, through the phases of the, of, of the moon, a month is completed. From the new moon to the new moon, as the moon goes through its different phases, a month is completed. That's around 29.5 days. All right? So the month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. Yeah, because the moon, well, like, like the scripture said in Genesis, the Lord made two great lights, one to rule the day, one to rule the night. And sometimes the moon is so bright that it, it, it's, it looks like uh, daytime at night. The moon can be so bright. Okay. So, once again, the word, uh, the word weak, when we looked it up in the etymology dictionary, the word weak means to change. Now, let's take a look at the phases of the moon. So we can get a, a, a 
greater understanding. All right, changes of the, there we go. So you have eight phases. You have no moon, barely you can see any light. And back in Israel, certain men were hired to, to be moon watchers. Their job was to watch for the moon, right? They, they were special men that their job was to watch for the new moon, okay? Which has a sliver of light, barely can be, be seen, all right? So as you see the new moon, and there you got Israelites that teach the new moon is the full moon, which, which, which is, is totally... Totally ridiculous. It's the same group that teaches that uh, the mark of the beast is sin. Why do you think we tell you we here at Great Millstone we have 100% truth? You can clearly see it looking at the phases of the moon. You can clearly see the new moon is not the full moon. The new moon is when there's barely any, any light. Okay? So we go from the new moon... And we have the illustration in the middle to show show us the cycle. So you go from the new moon to the wax to something called bear, bear for me for a minute. Something called waxen crescent. That's where you get the word croissant. If you look at, at a croissant, which is French, it, it, it looks like a, a sickle, a bread shaped like a sickle. A bread shaped like a sickle. Type in the 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 term sickle. S I C K L E, right? So that's a waxen crescent. That's what Esau calls it, a waxen crescent. Waxen means it's, it's, it's uh, increasing. You got first quarter. You got first quarter. That's the next stage. Now keep in mind there's eight stages. So first quarter would be the, th the uh, from the new moon would be the third stage. A waxen gibbous, right, and full moon. Now, from the new moon to the full moon, that's 14 days going into the 15th day. The evening of the 14th day, that would be a full moon. A full moon. And what, what is it full of? It's full of light. Now, you'll notice it took two weeks to get to a full moon. It took two weeks. 14 days going into the evening. Two weeks. Now the word week means to what? To alter, to change. So a great change happened from the new moon to the full moon and it took two weeks to get there. Right? So now the cycle is repeated again but this time it's, it's going back to the new moon. So from the full moon, when the when the body is full of light, that's what it means, full moon. How can a new moon be full moon when the full moon is, it means full because it's, it's filled with light? The new moon has no light or barely any light. It takes a, 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 a trained person to be able to see that, that light to determine a, a new moon. They were called moon watchers. Okay, so the full moon is full with light, then it starts to decrease, just like the scripture says. Let's read it again. For, uh, Ecclesiastes 43 and 7, from the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. When, when does it reach? When does the moon reach her perfection? When it's a full moon, what is it perfect with? Light. It's a perfect body of light, full moon. And that's how you know it was the mid-month. Again, re remember, time was calibrated by the moon. That's why the moon was specifically created, to calibrate time. So, again, from the moon is the sign of feasts, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. And we're going to see that. From the full moon, we go to the waning gibbous. As you can clearly see, the light is starting to decrease from the moon. So the first stage after the full moon would be the waning gibbous. Waning means 
decreasing. Waxing means increasing. Waning means decreasing. Then you have the third quarter, where it's like half, and you've seen the moon like that, where half half of the body is, is filled with light, the other half is dark. Then you have the waning crescent, and it's shaped like a crescent. That's where you get the word croissant from, the French word. Then it goes back to the full moon. The full moon. Then it goes back, <laughs> that was nothing but Satan, goes back to the new moon, the new moon. All right, we started with the full moon. We went through the waning gibbous. We went through the third quarter. We went through the waning crescent. We went back to the new moon. All right? So those are your eight stages of the moon. And that completes one month, which the, the term month is named, was named after the term moon. I mean, it's not hard to understand, man. So that's how time is calibrated. As a matter of fact, let's keep reading. Ecclesiasticus 43, because months turn into what? Years. All right. Days turn into months. Months turn into to years. 12 months equals what? One year. One calendar year, which the word calendar means call, call lens. Call lens. Usually the first day of the month uh, whatever loans that was loaned out, they were called in, meaning they were due. That's why even to this day, when usually on the first of the month, your rent is due. Goes back to calendar. The term calendar means call lens. Any loans that were given out on that day, the first day of the, of the month, those loans were to be called in, meaning you had to pay what you owe. You had to pay off the loan. All right, so... Ecclesiasticus 43 and 8, the moon is called after her name. I keep saying the moon. The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing. First, the first, the seventh verse said decreasing from her perfection. Then it says increasing wonderfully at her changing. Remember, remember the work, the word work, the word weak means to change. So you got the new moon increasing. To the full moon then goes back to the new moon very easy to understand increasing wonderfully in her changing being an instrument of the armies above shining in the firmament of heaven there you go all right so going back to exodus 34 and 21. So now you know how this, the seventh day would be calibrated. The seventh day would be calibrated from the first day of the month, which is the new moon. Then you count seven days, that's your Sabbath. So like it says here, six days thou, thou shalt work, but on the seventh day thou shalt rest. Which the word seventh, the, the, actually the word uh, Sabbath, uh, Shabbat, actually means rest. It means seven and it means rest because we rest on the seventh day, meaning no work. Then it says in errant time and in harvest thou shalt rest. Now all you have to do is go to the NLT. The NLT goes it, into it even more. It says you have six days each week for your ordinary work, but on the seventh day you must stop working even during the seasons of plowing and harvest so plowing and harvest plowing is when you break up the ground that's the time of airing uh, you, you you know you're breaking up the ground so you can plant the seed and then the seed grows you know the fruits whatever then you, there's the time of harvest when you go out to pick the fruit all right so during the seasons of plowing and harvest you have six days to work okay you have six days to work but on the seventh day, you cannot work because we're, we're observing the Sabbath. Remember, uh, you go to the book of, um, what is that, Exodus 20 and 3? Let's read that, Exodus 20 and 3. Actually, Exodus 20 and 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, what calibrates the Sabbath day? The moon. As I clearly showed you, the phases of the moon. 
That's what calibrates the, the seventh day. That's what calibrates the Sabbath. That, that's what calibrates the feast days. That's what calibrates the month. The term month came from moon. Okay? So, there you go. So, hopefully, you uh, understood. And if you did, uh, Israel for Life, drop me a line in the comment section. Hopefully, this video was edifying to you brothers as well as your sisters out there who uh, might be uh, confused concerning the new moon, the full moon. And you shouldn't be confused anymore because I showed you the phases of the moon. The new moon is not the full moon. The new moon is, is a different phase from the full moon. The full moon happens 14 days after the, after the first moon, which is the new moon. 14 days later, going into the 15th day, you have your full moon. That's half the month. Then it goes back, the cycle repeats itself, goes back to the new moon, and the full month is completed. All right? Very easy to understand. And during that month, you have something called weeks. The word weak means to change. We just saw that from the information given in the etymology uh, dictionary. All right, so on to the next one. Shalom for now.